Hello everybody, welcome back to the James Lawrence Allcott channel, the all or nothing documentary involving Spurs, documenting on and off the field action from the 2019-2020 season has arrived. I was able to see a couple of the episodes early doors just before, just to get a sneak peek and I'm going to talk about the things that I learned from the all or nothing documentary from Amazon involving Jose Mourinho, Harry Kane, Deli Alley, Daniel Levy, Pochettino sacking and so much more. Before I get into the video, if you do fancy subscribing, you feel like being kind today, just move your mouse along, click that button. I want to get myself to 50,000 subscribers. That would be the dream. So if you do want to be kind today and you do enjoy the content, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. And uh, if you enjoyed this video by the end, hit the like button as well. If you don't want to see any spoilers, then maybe click off this video right now. But let's get into it with number one, which is that Mourinho was the money. They don't mess about. When it comes to this documentary, and I'll give you my final review of how I feel about the documentary at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around. But they're not messing about. It's about getting Pochettino out the door and concentrating on Jose Mourinho. The guy's an enigma. We want to see what he's got to offer when it comes to the training ground, when it comes to the changing rooms, and who is he really? We're never really sure. We never really trust what is coming out of Jose Mourinho's mouth. And in this documentary, you get a real taste of who Jose Mourinho is as a person. And to be honest, he doesn't disappoint at all. He's everything that you really want him to be. He's cunning. He's actually got a bit of heart about him. He's got a huge amount of charm about him as well. And ultimately, as we all thought, he's about winning. He is about winning. And understandably, the documentary makers, when it comes to documentaries, it's about what you leave out as much as what you put in. And a lot of the demise of Mauricio Pochettino is left out of this documentary. By the end of the first episode, Jose Mourinho is in the hot seat. I don't blame them for that. Pochettino is a, a lot more shy as a manager. He's not as... as outgoing as Jose Mourinho and understandably the trailer was all about Jose Mourinho and his arrival and for Tottenham Hotspur as well I think it suits them as a football club that they don't cover too much old ground when it comes to Pochettino they look forward and they concentrate on Jose Mourinho but he was the money for the documentary makers they were quick to get Pochettino almost out the door quite literally and get Jose Mourinho on screen as soon as possible. Number two Mauricio Pochettino saw it coming he did there's an element in the documentary, a scene in it where he's talking about the sort of demise or the stagnation of a football team and, and how important that is as a manager. You've got to see it before it happens to allow it to stop, to be able to catch it when things fall out of place. And he's talking about Tottenham Hotspur. He's talking about the contracts. He's talking about the playing staff. He's talking about the story arc of this squad, which ultimately after five years, got to the end of its tether. And a few players that we'll talk about later in this video, they'd had enough. They'd, they were ready to go. And Pochettino saw all of this coming and you've got to offer us something. You've got to catch it before it drops. He goes on to try and take it back and goes, I'm talking about in general, I'm talking about in general. It's not true. He was talking about his situation because let's remember in that documentary, that's where the great stuff about this. That's the inside of it. You see the emotion in the moment. And Pochettino is in that place. He's frustrated. He wants to see it all work out at, at, at Spurs, um, but he can see it crumbling. And Pochettino, so he saw it coming. Number three, Deli Alley is lazy. It's official. <laughs> that was one of the more negative storylines in this documentary. Jose Mourinho goes straight in there. He's got that cunning. He's a bit of a maverick. And he goes to Deli Alley and he goes straight after him. Deli Alley's form in the 18 months previous has been quite poor after a bit of a rapid rise in Tottenham Hotspur from MK Dons to Tottenham Hotspur. And it's fallen away a little bit. And Jose Mourinho is looking to get a reaction from Deli Alley. And he, he pokes the bear somewhat. He talks about his training, says that Harry Kane is this ultimate professional, that Harry Kane is the guy's training constantly. Deli Alley, he's not getting the same element of, of, of work rate from him. And he looks to get that from him in a team meeting where he talks to him. And, and he makes it very clear. And in a documentary that doesn't highlight too many clear negatives or negatives that have any kind of poor intentions, this is probably the one storyline that comes out, is that Deli Alley's training methods aren't up to scratch and that Jose Mourinho is demanding a lot more from him. Stick with Deli Alley and number four is that Sir Alex Ferguson wanted to sign Deli Alley for Manchester United. Jose Mourinho says this. 
in a meeting with Daniel Levy. There's a quite a few meetings between Daniel Levy and Jose Mourinho that make it into the documentary. And Jose Mourinho says that Sir Alex Ferguson said one thing to him, one bit of advice whilst he was manager of Manchester United, and it was to sign Deli Alley. He said, go sign him. Because I think, I guess that's where that connection between Sir Alex Ferguson and Jose Mourinho comes to be. I think they see a little bit of each other uh, in each other. It's in particular, in terms of the art of war, the mind games, the, the cunning, the ruthlessness. And I think they both see that in Deli Alley. And that's why Sir Alex Ferguson said that to Jose Mourinho, but he reveals it in this documentary, in All or Nothing, that he wanted Jose Mourinho to go get Deli Alley and get him to play for Man United. Number five, Harry Kane is captain fantastic for Tottenham Hotspur, but he's got actually bigger ambitions than that. He wants to be at the Messi level. He wants to be at the Ronaldo level. In a meeting with Jose Mourinho, we see a lot of Jose Mourinho's office actually in this documentary. He sits down with Harry Kane and he says to him, I see that you want to be a winner and I want to take you there. Harry Kane then replied saying, I want to be Messi level. I want to be Ronaldo level. He literally does that with his hand. And so he sees those two above him right now, but he's not messing about. Harry Kane is an ambitious player and he wants to take himself to that level. He sees himself as one of the best in the world. And that's where his ambitions lie, which I think if you're a Tottenham Hotspur fan, I think you should be really, really excited by that, that he's not gone, yeah, okay, I'm at the level that I'm happy with. Let's see if we can keep this going. He's looking up, he's looking forwards, and he's looking to be at the same level as Ronaldo and Messi. Can he do something like that? Let me know in the comments below. Can a striker in that kind of style, can he be at the level of a Ronaldo or a Messi? Has he still got it in him? Is he a little bit too old? Is, which, should we have seen that by now? Or does Harry Kane have the potential to be at that Messi or Ronaldo level? Let me know in the comments below. Number six. Tottenham Hotspur are officially too nice. It's a storyline that is littered throughout the first three episodes and they're all quite happy to kind of understand that that's who they are, which will disappoint Tottenham Hotspur fans. And I'm not sure I totally buy it. I think that's an easy thing to say when it doesn't go your way as a football team that it's about being a little bit too nice. I think there are players in that squad, Odovarot, Dyer, Vertonghen, Harry Kane, Deli Alley. They're not too nice. But that is something that is labelled at Tottenham Hotspur. Is that something that maybe Jose Mourinho is just looking to get out to the world just to make sure that this, this team, as he says in his own words, is a team of bastards. That's what he wants. In his first team meeting before his first game against West Ham, he goes, you're too nice and it needs to change. You need to be bastards on the pitch. I think that's something that might be in the heads of referees as we go along, so keep an eye out for that. Bit of a prediction from me. I expect more bookings, more suspensions, and more red cards from Tottenham Hotspur because the amalgamation of Tottenham Hotspur players being told, look, I need you to be a little bit nastier here, and the referees being aware of it as well because look, they're not robots. They're gonna watch this documentary and they're gonna be keeping an eye out for that kind of skullduggery that most football fans are cool with seeing. And I'm sure Tottenham, Tottenham Hotspur fans will be happy to see, but rival fans will also see it and it will be become a storyline in itself. Number seven, and this is a big one. Daniel Levy can spot a cashmere jacket like that. That's right. He sees uh, Pochettino right in the first episode. He has an NFL game. He's very excited about it, especially for spending a bit of time with Pochettino, especially really relaxed, which of course it's not because it's his boss and he's never going to truly be relaxed despite them feeling like they have some kind of emotional connection. It's not true, Levy. Mate, you, you chop their necks off. Not literally, obviously. But you sack them and you go on to sack him. So thinking there's any kind of like a true emotional connection between the two of you, hmm, not sure about that. But he can spot... A cashmere jacket a mile off. Classy guy. Sticking with Daniel Levy and number eight, he wooed the NFL. It was his own words. He wooed them. And why wouldn't he? A 10-year partnership with the NFL. They're going to be coming to London every single year, playing games at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And that's why you would win, because the money that you will get from that situation is pretty, pretty huge. If you have a look at the stadium, they show it in the documentary, it's amazing. They've literally got two pitches on top of each other, ready to swap round for the NFL to allow high quality uh, pitches and high quality aesthetics when it comes to the NFL. And Daniel Levy was ready to woo them. And importantly so, because the money that you make from that NFL partnership, there's the residual elements of the exposure that comes from highlighting 
and championing a, a huge American sport with an American audience, or, or ultimately a worldwide audience, but also the money. The money that comes from the, so the way it works out, NFL of course host the games and they pay for that. But Tottenham Hotspur make all the money from drinks and merchandise. And in one of the games, they made over a million pounds on drinks alone from an NFL game. So you can understand why Daniel Levy, who says those words in the documentary, why he wooed the NFL. Number nine. Now Christian Eriksen, remember the trailer? There's a moment where he goes <gasps> and has a look. Why was he looking like that? Was he looking at Jose Mourinho like that? Turns out it was all smoke and mirrors and he was actually only just looking at the television. So that's why there was that clear, dark stare. It's because he literally was just watching Sky Sports News and watching the news come in, roll in. It wasn't him looking at someone specifically. So great work from the producers there. Well put together when it comes to the cut because you see Christian Eriksen go and you think that's a big moment. Turns out he was just watching the telly. Number 10, Musa Sissoko is a highly influential figure in this Tottenham Hotspur squad. Not someone that you'd normally look to as a leader when, as football fans, we watch it in terms of the media portrayal. He's a player who offers up high energy in that midfield. And often when you're looking at the leaders, you're looking at different players. You're looking at centre-backs. You might be looking at Harry Kane, of course, as a striker. Or you might be looking at that, that centre midfielder who gets on the ball. And that's not always Musa Sissoko. But... When a reconnaissance mission was happening after Jose Mourinho came through the door, his assistant manager said to him that Musa Soko was actually one of the influential figures in this Tottenham Hotspur dressing room. He also goes on to say about Vertonghen being a bit of a warrior for Spurs as well. But Musa Soko, a, a player who's had quite a, a, a checkered journey when it comes to Tottenham Hotspur, initially being a bit of a joke and then becoming a bit of a cult figure, he's actually a, a leader in that dressing room and highly influential. Number 11, Tottenham Hotspur had to deal with a lot of instability when it came to the playing staff in their squad during the 2019-2020 season. Vertonghen, out of Aerald, Christian Eriksen, three players that have been at Tottenham Hotspur through all those great years, through the rise up to being a mid-table team to a Champions League final team. And all three of them were concerned with their contract negotiations over the season. And that is an insightful element of the documentary that often we don't really give enough credence to is to how much it's going to affect you when you're not sure what's happening with your future. And I think actually the, the worry of that becomes it's more emphasized it multiplies the older you get when you're a little bit younger you go well I'll go to another club and life will be fine but for these players that have been at Spurs for a long time they have an emotional connection there they also are getting to the latter years of their career so the likes of Christian Eriksen, Vertonghen and Alderweireld they want to be settled they want to get a nice paycheck and they want some form of security so all three were looking to do that and that's going to affect your performances somewhat. Alderweireld, of course, signed a contract, but Tongan didn't at the end of it, and Christian Eriksen made his way. But that instability within that squad, and that's something that Vertonghen talks about. He talks about how him and Alderweireld have played more games with each other than without, and that they were talking about their contracts every single day. So these guys are humans, and they are players who are hoping to kind of have some kind of stability. And if they don't, they will talk about it. Number 13, Song Hoon Min is my favourite. It's official. I love the guy. You know, such elegance with the ball. Physically, just uh, just has such guile and quality. And he's so proficient. He's so fluent. And then he's also actually just the nicest dude on the planet. The guy is just beautiful. I've just got a bit of a... Well, not a bit. It's a giant man crush on the guy. He gets sent off in the series uh, against Chelsea, you remember, from kicking out. In the moment, he's upset. He's saying, how is that a red card? But actually, the next day, he's sorry. He's like, look, I'm 27. He takes accountability, takes responsibility. And he's just lovely. He's just a good guy. The guy's a superstar in, in Korea, and it obviously doesn't get to him. You can tell that all the players absolutely adore him, and I adore him as well, okay? I love the guy. And last up, one more for Jose Mourinho, who is, of course, the star of this documentary. He loves giant balls. He does. He loves giant balls. That's what he says in his team talks often. He, that's what he wants to see from the players that he has in the squad. I'm not sure that that's what he feels that he totally has, but it's also it's going to be part of his recruitment. Players like Matt Doherty, who gets a quick mention from Jose Mourinho in the documentary as an aggressive player when he's highlighting this Wolves team that is a really strong team last season in the 2019-2020 season. Matt Doherty is that kind of player with the kind of 
the psychological strength, the cunning that Jose Mourinho wants to see in this Tottenham Hotspur team. But ultimately, he wants players with giant balls. Not literally, because that's going to get in the way of your mobility. What he means is being able to deal with the pressure. He says it time and again in his team talks. Deal with the pressure. So, the final thing, when it comes to reviewing the first three episodes of All or Nothing, and what I learned, I learned that Jose Mourinho, he's aware of the ideas around him now. He, he's aware that the the press, they feel like he's a bit dour, that he's ruthless. But actually, a lot of these elements are true. The style of football is secondary to winning. That is something that has been given the rubber stamp, let's be honest, by Jose Mourinho in this documentary. But at the same time, you can't help but fall in love with the guy. He's very charming. He brings you on board. He takes you on board. And you, you can imagine players who are on the right side of him they want to do absolutely anything for him. My final feelings on the first three episodes of the documentary as a whole, aside from Jose Mourinho, is it feels it's great. The insight, the, the shooting of it is absolutely stunning. There is an element of it feeling a bit like a documercial. It feels a bit light. It feels a bit safe. The negative elements of it, understandably, when you're putting together something like this, if you want to get that kind of access, there's going to be concessions that need to, to take place on both sides. Spurs need to offer up some, some kinds of negatives that are put in there. I think the Deli Alley one was one that they were okay with doing because they felt like he could deal with the pressure of that. But a lot of the storylines that have occurred in the wider press when it comes to Tottenham Hotspur, I don't think they were focused on in as much detail as they could have been. Understandably, they want to focus on on Tottenham Hotspur and what they're striving towards and highlighting that their intentions, of course, are, are good and that they're a little bit too nice. But the negatives that are there, they feel like they're on the terms that Tottenham Hotspur will be okay with. And for me, that's something that, I don't know, it doesn't totally sit right with me, but it's also something I was probably expecting because you've seen that in the other All or Nothing documentaries. I think if you're going to be able to get that kind of insight to be able to be in all of those conversations, there's got to be an element of it often when it's giant businesses, and I mean giant businesses when I'm talking about Tottenham Hotspur, giant businesses having to deal with their own kind of PR of, of themselves. And so as much as they're having to step into it and there's going to be winning and losing, the intentions of every player on the pitch is, as a blank canvas there, that it's very clear that they are giving absolutely everything. They're just ultimately a little bit too nice. And for me, I wouldn't say that that's completely correct. I don't think they're totally too nice. I think there's other elements at play. I also feel like the Pochettino dismissal, I felt like that was dealt with very quickly. I understand why, again, this is what documentary makers have to do. They have to decide what stays in and what goes. And Jose Mourinho, I'll be honest, if you give me Jose Mourinho, nine hours of him, nine hours of Pochettino, I'm going to choose Jose Mourinho. So from an entertainment standpoint, I get why they went down that road, got Pochettino out of the way, which suits Tottenham Hotspur as a football club as well. They don't want to concentrate on that. They want to concentrate on the guy who's got the job in that moment in time. And so they dealt with Pochettino very quickly. I felt like they could have spent maybe an episode and a half more uh, maybe a little bit less than that, but at least the first two episodes really concentrating on the demise of Pochettino. But they didn't do that. They wanted to get to Jose Mourinho. That was my first point. He is the money. And so I understand why they did that. I cannot wait to see the rest of the documentary. It's on Amazon Prime if you haven't got it. So go check it out. I think it's definitely worth watching. It's definitely worth elements of insight that you're able to take from it. And it's beautifully, beautifully shot. Let me know what you think about this documentary. I think a lot of Spurs fans are very concerned about it just turning them into a meme. And I'm sure those memes will find themselves to Twitter and different places like that. But for me, I enjoyed watching it i found some kind of insight but i am left wanting a little bit more a tiny bit more i felt like it was on tottenham hotspurs terms let me know what you think in the comments below if you've enjoyed this video then why not hit the subscribe button to the james lawrence alcott channel check out all the other videos bits and pieces lots more on the horizon as the season gets underway once again some previews on their way so if you don't want to miss them hit the notification bell Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button as well, and I'll see you soon.